good evening uh, participants we have great pleasure to welcome you all for today's exciting and an informative webinar titled robotics and mechanical engineering it's of course my privilege to introduce you all our today's speaker dr rajiv lochna chitwadi dr rajiv sir he is currently serving as an assistant professor in the department of medical uh, mechanical engineering amrita vishya vidyapeetam amrita school of engineering bengaluru campus dr rajiv sir has completed his ms of course in research in mechanical engineering from iit delhi and currently rajiv sir is pursuing his phd in the department of mechanical engineering at the same iit delhi rajiv sir has a very rich experience working in automobile industry cad software development and research experience at iit delhi before joining amrita vishya vidyapeetham rajiv sir has an extensive knowledge on the development of engineering analysis analysis software like robo analyzer mechanical analyzer etc dr rajiv sir actively pursues his research in the fields of robotics mechanism cad and graphics with this uh, small and a brief uh, introduction i request uh, dr rajiv sir to take on this webinar and to go ahead with the presentation please uh thank you sukumar sukumaram sir a very warm welcome to all the participants for this webinar on robotics and mechanical engineering okay so as you can see on the title slide uh, the topic being robotics and mechanical engineering and i have given a theme past present and future so uh, we'll just go through uh, these topics like what they mean in terms of uh, whatever choice you are going to make in few months from now on okay so the image that you can see here we are all very well aware of it so this is nothing but evolution of man and right now we are at this particular location modern man and who knows some of you may be able to design uh, suits which can fly like you all would have seen iron man for that matter something like that is definitely possible and uh, that is why i like this particular picture and that will serve as a motivation for our uh, webinar today so where lies the future okay so i am a faculty in the mechanical department in bangalore campus of amrita vishwa vidyapeetham and this is my email id in case Yeah, if you want to connect with me later, you can definitely shoot me an email, and I'll try to do my justice over that. Okay. So the overview of the presentation for this webinar consists of a brief, very brief introduction of what Amrita is, and a biography of myself. I'm the speaker for this webinar. then i'll consider each one of these topics as far as mechanical engineering and robotics what are what has been the past what is the current situation and what will be the future okay and then we'll end with uh, conclusion and some q and a session will also be there okay a very brief introduction to amrita so amrita vishwavidyapeetham is uh, a uh, institute a group of institutions that was started by sri mata amritananda mai devi who we all fondly call as amma and it was established in 1994 and it was conferred deemed to be university status in 2003 okay ever since 1994 lot of growth has happened to this particular uh, institute or group of institutes and uh, some statistics you can see on the screen currently there are six campuses then there are 2000 plus faculty members of which more than 800 hold phd from well known uh, universities and institutes okay and currently we have these campuses and there are few more upcoming campuses as well the numbers out here regarding publications and citations tell us how uh, we are doing research in different fields 
Okay. Now, a very brief introduction about myself. My name is Rajiv Lochana Chittawadigi. Uh, I have four roles to play in my life. One has been as a student. So, as a student, I did my schooling in Karnataka. Then I completed my BTEC Mechanical Engineering from NIT Allahabad, which was formerly a regional engineering college. Then I did my MS research from IIT Delhi. Then currently I'm pursuing PhD at IIT Delhi as well. Okay. And if you see there are three dots here, that means in life we never stop learning. So something or other will come and we'll have to work towards it. Okay. So this is about me as a student. And then as an engineer, uh, after my BTEC, I worked in Hironda Motors Limited in R&D department. And thereafter, I did MS and then I went, sorry, in between, I was also CAD software developer at ERCAD.com. Then after MS research, I joined uh, 3D PLM software, which makes a mechanical CAD software like SolidWorks, Catia, Delmia. Okay. So this particular company is currently known as Dassault Systems. So they also manufacture Dassault uh, aerospace or aircrafts that Indian uh, Air Force is procuring. Okay. So I worked there and somehow uh, I was inclined towards doing research and teaching and hence I joined Amrita. Before joining Amrita, I was also doing a lot of research. My first instinct uh, or stint as a research was in IFC Bangalore as a summer intern, actually in two summers. I was there during my BTEC. And thereafter, uh, I joined IIT Delhi as a project scientist and senior research fellow. So at IIT Delhi, uh, I was very fortunate to have a teacher named Professor Subir Kumar Saha. So he motivated me to do many wonderful stuff in my life. One of them being uh, robo analyzer software, which I take to great pride. So you can see towards the right, I have a screenshot of the software. So it allows us to simulate robots, basically. Okay. Similarly, there is another software named Mech Analyzer. I also visited many uh, foreign universities for attending conferences and uh, also as a student invitee in Japan. Many conference papers I have authored, and uh, I have a good uh, interaction or collaboration with other professors from different institutes. Okay. So this is about researcher, which is a continuing role. I keep doing it. And my full-time job is a teacher. So I joined Amrita in 2015 as a, uh, in the Department of Mechanical Engineering. So I have two uh, very clear things. Sorry, I have two qualities that make me a good teacher. One of them being I am caring towards students. And also, I'm clear the concepts as well as anything for that matter, right? So you have to be very transparent in life. Because of these two aspects, a lot of students like me a lot. Okay, so that is something. If there are teachers here listening to this webinar, please try to inculcate these two qualities. You should care about your students, and you should also be clear. Okay, this is something I learned from a professor in IIT Madras for another webinar. So I give that straight to him also. Okay. So and I also use a lot of uh, technologies in teaching uh, concepts. So because of all this, I've been invited in uh, many faculty development programs to as a resource person to teach the teachers. Okay. And I've been mentoring and guiding students and interns for various projects. So that particular experience also gives me some uh, weightage to speak to you, many students, aspirants like you all. Okay. So summary of my uh, biography, I have expertise in robotics, mechanisms, graphics, and program. So this particular combination is uh, a bit rare to find. And hence, uh, yeah, I have uh, good value in this system. Now coming to aspirants or BTEC aspirants or whoever you guys are. So you and I, all of us had different uh, timelines so for that matter. So past, your past, considering that you are all class 11 and 12 students, you had your past in your school where the education was much more open. Like there were a lot of 
scope school for uh, or scope for creative thinking, innovative thinking, and you pass, participated in a lot of extra and co-curricular activities. Summary: It was a fun time for all of you. So I have a graphic to represent this. So basically, like you had many more time, but over the time uh, you were converging. Okay, there were like strict thought process that oh, you have to do this, you have to do that. Okay. Current or present, you are all in class 11 and 12. So we have this cycle: study, eat, sleep, repeat. Okay. It's unfortunate, but definitely the competition is so much that you are bound to do. If you don't do it, you will be losing out. Okay. Personally, I'm not a great fan of this philosophy, but to survive in this world, you may have to do this. Okay. So this graphic explains streamlines. Which are compressed in a sense like you have a lot of stress here. Okay, too much to study, too little freedom. Okay, and uh, that is not good. So what happens after your class 12? You may choose these options like engineering, like architecture, medicine, and so on and so forth. Once you choose, few seniors or maybe few you, you might also feel that I have put in so much effort. Now I will not stop. Like I'll stop studying and not do anything else because I've already studied for class four. This is what I hear from my students also. Okay. So what happens is this: there is a sudden expansion in all of your life that you might end up losing track. All these red arrows you see, they they are the scenarios or set of students who will misuse the freedom when they go out of this or when they join a new course. So philosophically, please try to have some goal in your life. Okay. So you try to work towards it and don't get uh, lost here and there. Okay. This is a very important phase of everyone's life. That is one of the reasons why I emphasize a couple of minutes on this particular scenario. Okay. Now, so what are the options that come with us? As undergraduate courses, there are at least 14 15 options that we have. And obviously, being from mechanical engineering department, I'll be considering the engineering option as a topic. And uh, in Amrita, we have these many uh, branches for engineering. Okay. And again, I'll be considering on the mechanical engineering aspect since that is a topic and that is also my department. So you might be wondering what to choose. Okay, if you are chosen to become an engineer, what branch should you take? Okay, so the order which I have written is roughly the order in which these branches came into existence. The civil was one of the earliest branch of humankind. Then mechanical, aerospace, chemical, electrical, electronics, and the science. The latest being artificial intelligence, machine learning. Big data analytics, all those keywords you might be hearing these days. Okay. What do you want to do in your life? That is very important. So, I have given these three keywords for you. One is passion, then there's a demand, and there's a supply. Passion means you want to do something in your life, right? If you're very particular about a particular thing, please do that. Choose that particular branch. Okay. So, for example, I had a passion to become a mechanical engineer because I'd like to play with stuff, open stuff, close it, make sure it is working. If something is broken, try to repair it. I enjoy doing it. Okay. And if you are very passionate about programming, definitely you should join a course that is related to computer science or artificial intelligence or something similar. Okay. So, ultimately, whatever you do in life, you should enjoy doing. So this passion is a very important term for all of you. Don't get into pressure from someone, maybe your parents or your relatives or your friends. Okay, just because uh, someone is joining a particular branch doesn't mean that you also have to join. So look what you want to become in your life and choose accordingly. Then we have something known as supply demand. Okay. So imagine the current scenario. Uh, I don't want to take names of few institutes. What they have done is they have literally closed down civil and mechanical or uh, some other branches, or they have not increased the number of seats, and they have increased the number of seats in a particular branch, like computer science. 
15, 18, 20 sections. Okay? So that, that is not acceptable in the sense that the quality degrades. And more importantly, what will happen to those many people when they come out? Do they have so much demand? Definitely not. Okay? So just because uh, there is a uh, issue of surface here, few people keep on saying that this particular branch is good, this is good. But what I want you to think is uh, get input from many places and ultimately take a decision based on these three aspects. Uh, next, we have uh, this particular visual I have put. So as you can see on the right side, there is a big mark. And this is like a simple fulcrum you would have studied in physics, like a seesaw. Okay. If I put enough force at shorter distance, I'll be able to lift that. Right? So this force should be your impact in life also. It right? doesn't matter what branch you choose, but definitely you should know where to apply force, how much to apply force. So these are some of the uh, qualities that I would like you to uh, pursue. One is you should be unique. Unique means I should not be replaced by someone else. So that is one of the reasons why we have so many jobs. So for a person like me, if someone considers me to be a very important person, they will not remove me from a particular job. Okay. Similarly, you should be hardworking. So you should always deliver uh, to your peers and also to superiors. Okay. And uh, that is only possible if you do some hard work. There is no shortcut in life. We should be focused and determined okay, to do a particular task. Then, yeah, this is something very important. We should always keep learning. Class 12, end of learning, no. We take end of learning, no. Okay. So every day, there will be something new to learn. If you do a job, if you go for higher studies, definitely there is always uh, you have to keep learning. Okay. And finally, this one, adaptable. Adaptable means you should be willing to accept changes. Say, for instance, this COVID situation has forced us all to make it online. All the classes are being conducted online. Uh, so you guys had difficulty in your postponement of your exams, and again, all your classes became online. So, so many things have happened in the last five months. Okay. So that is because uh, of some pandemic and it might repeat in future also. So that means what we should be ready and we should be adaptive. Whatever happens, we should change ourselves and work towards goals. Okay. Next, I'll briefly explain about mechanical engineering. I like mechanical engineering because it is a natural extension of whatever you have studied so far. Physics, chemistry, and mathematics. Okay, that's why uh, I just put physics plus plus, which consists of some of the topics in that we study in mechanical engineering. Also, mechanics, thermodynamics, theory of machines, design, robotics, automobile, and so on and so forth. These are some of the topics or subjects or courses we study in mechanical engineering, which I can say as extension of physics. Similarly, uh, chemistry. We can say that we have few subjects, medical science, manufacturing science, a few more, which deal with all those the positioning of atoms and uh, the strength of the material or distance between molecules and so on and so forth. Okay, property of materials basically. <clears throat> then, in case of maths, so um, we do a lot of computer aided design, that is also one of my uh, expertise. So that requires a lot of mathematics. So finite element and method analysis is another subject. Then we also have something known as operation research, supply chain management. And again, robotics also has a lot of mathematics. Yeah, obviously these subjects also will have mathematics, but uh, yeah, I just made them as extension of physics. Okay. Now, mechanical engineering uh, is further classified into four main pillars, you can say. One is design, <coughs> screen, then we have thermal, then we have manufacturing, and then industrial engineering. Okay. So these are broad classification of a mechanical engineering course. Since I belong to design, I thought I'll uh, take a simple approach. Uh, what are the different courses 
<coughs> so we study related to design. Okay. So I have something on the screen here, so which we all call it as a slider crank mechanism. Okay. And typically, uh, same system or similar system we use in courses in sequence. Okay. So for example, if I want to study such system, I need to know how to draw drawings. Okay. Technical drawings. So we call that as engineering drawings. Then we have something known as engineering mechanics, which deals with forces <coughs> and moments. Okay, typically this is covered in the first year. Then <coughs> we learn to do the CAD model of that particular uh, design, right? The mechanism itself. CAD model means computer aided design. We can use software to model this and also give motion to it. When we give motion, for example, there is a link that is rotating like this, the green one, and then we have a yellow link that is going, and then we have a slider, something that is going horizontal right and left. Okay. So these topics will be studied in something known as kinematics or mechanics. So this, this whole thing is known as a mechanism for us. <coughs> and in some courses, we also have a programming aspect on how to get this done, how to animate it, okay, mechanical systems. So this is typically done in the second year or uh, maybe the third semester or fourth semester. Then we also study something on the strength of materials. What should be the uh, shape of each link, right? Where are the forces applied and uh, will it break or not break? All those stuff will be studied in strength of materials. Simple, like if the name says it all. Then we have something known as dynamics, which will uh, also consider forces when the motion is happening. Right now, this is only geometric. This will also have forces into pitch. Further, once all of this is done, then we have to design the actual shape of this particular setup. So if someone observes it more carefully, this is more like your IC engine, internal combustion engine that is found in all your two wheelers and four wheelers. Okay, we have something on a crank, a connecting rod, a piston, a cylinder head, and so on and so forth. Okay. So exact shape, the thickness, material, all have to be studied in machine elements design. Similarly, we can also do something on a finite element analysis where uh, if something is getting broken, where is it broken, how to improve that, all those aspects can be studied in finite element analysis. So this is a very uh, broad overview of subjects in design. Similarly, we can look at subjects in thermal, then manufacturing, and also in industrial design. There is a particular sequence in which the subjects are introduced in your curriculum. Okay. So to find it more, uh, to make it more interesting, I have included two uh, snapshots of projects or products that uh, mechanical engineering students do. So all these images are from Amrita. Okay, so I am not going to get into too much of detail, but definitely uh, very briefly I'll explain. So this particular setup uh, is like a wind turbine. Okay. So there's a blower here which will keep uh, applying wind or force, and accordingly, this, this is a small prototype our students have developed. This is a very simple mechanism which has two motors. And the end point, which I'm pointing, can write some alphabets. Okay. Similarly, there is a device here which can control a web camera mounted on a simple robot. And this is the input device. Yeah, if I rotate this white input device, the camera also moves accordingly. This is a bulletproof jacket developed by one uh, professor and a student in uh, our Coimbatore campus. He belongs to the aerospace department. This is a project by a few students on human powered vehicles. Then this is a rice planting mechanism. Uh, this can be used on fields where rice uh, saplings are inserted by a mechanism. Okay. And these two are uh, vehicles developed by our students to participate in uh, competitions. Not exactly racing competitions, but it deals with a lot of endurance and testing and so many other stuff also. Yeah, definitely these are events by SAE, Society of Automotive Engineers. Okay. 
Now, uh, we also deal with a lot of simulation. So, for example, these were some of these, my students work on if I want to remove material from few processes like the drilling and milling, how to simulate that. Okay. Then, this is also something on a turning operation, like you would have heard of a lathe machine. If you have observed 3 idiots movie, so there were some instances where you could see lathe machines there. The lathe machines are used to uh, turn rotating uh, basically like cylindrical objects and give them some shape. Okay. So my students have developed a software which can simulate this particular uh, operation. Similarly, there is research by few other fellow colleagues. So where if you are removing some material, what are the different structures uh, that are observed on the material? Okay. So before we do physical prototype, that means on a physical prototype, we can do simulation okay, and see whether it is appropriate or not. If we find it appropriate, then we will go for physical uh, prototype. Okay. Next. Yeah, these are some more work by our students and uh, supervisors who are uh, PhD holders from different cities like IITs. So this particular work is by one student or group of students. So basically, if you want to study the thermal distribution or temperature distribution across some elements. So for example, I want to have a mobile phone which will have a processor. And if I want to put some components on it, I should be able to dissipate the heat that is generated in the processor. Okay. So what should be the shape of that particular element? Okay. Every time we can't make physical prototypes, so obviously we have to know the mathematics behind that. And then, so you can see that the students have simulated for a particular component and how the temperature distribution is there. If I blow air on it, then what will be the temperature distribution? Okay. Accordingly, you can have fans put to reduce the temperature. So, such kind of work is also done at undergraduate level. Then, uh, this is something known as computational fluid dynamics, where if you want to check what are the different again uh, forces that are being applied on moving objects, right? So, for example, there is an aircraft, or if a uh, car has to be designed, what should be the shape so that it has least drag and higher fuel efficiency. So we can accordingly use air flow channels. And this particular example is how to design an air conditioner system so that it has effective cooling. So basically you can see a few lines that are going around. So all these are computer simulation. Right? So this is one of the advancements in the current scenario that we should all gear up and proceed ahead. Uh, so another uh, uh, setup we have in our Bangalore campus is this shockwave and hypersonic lab. So there's a device here which has very uh, low pressure, that is vacuum here, and there'll be high pressure at this end. There'll be some kind of airflow will be there, very high velocity airflow will be passed. So this is some uh, device that has been kept somewhere here. And if you can observe, there is a thin line or arc that is representing the air. As the air comes and hits, the images have been captured, and you can see that it comes and bombards this particular edge. So, by changing the shape of these uh, arrows, you will be able to observe different uh, flow pattern. Okay, so such. Studies are required for space vehicles. So when, when we have a rocket or a space shuttle that is coming back inside Earth, re-entry vehicle we call. So such uh, studies are important to make sure the components don't fail. Okay. So similarly, there are few CAD simulation also on such shapes where the flow can be seen how it is happening. So these are few images that were taken in uh, CAD software like Ansios and uh, Comps. Okay. Now, that uh, com culminates uh, some of the projects that we have done here in Amrita, all the campuses. And now, let's very briefly look at uh, 
what has been the past of mechanical so summary is this this is an ambassador car i had seen probably you wouldn't have seen if you go to kolkata you will definitely see okay but your parents would have definitely seen so that means what we had very few choices in the past and similarly in mechanical domain also a lot of manual calculations had to be done okay and it was taking more time to bring any product to the market okay in the current scenario what has happened is we are using computers for everything you know for analysis for design for prototyping and then we use robots for manufacturing okay so this is more productive lesser time to manufacture and hence we can go for flexible customization So what you see here are a set of uh, Maruti Suzuki Ignis. Okay, so depending on what owner wants, so they can slightly modify and give it as a personalized style. This is some example I'm putting so that you understand what I'm talking about. Okay. Similarly, what is there for future in mechanical? So we'll be dealing with a lot of virtual and augmented reality. So basically, you can put that VR uh, glasses and look at CAD models. Instead of on a computer screen, uh, that is very much possible. Then there is something known as Industry 4.0, where a lot of components are connected over internet. So that is also known as Internet of Things. Okay. Then we'll have robots which will be smart. So that is something I'll explain in the coming slides. This will allow us to do a lot of custom manufacturing. Okay. So you all know this person. This is Bumblebee from Transformer. So we. Who knows? We might have a future where uh, it will be such kind of interesting future. Okay. So this is about mechanical engineering, and why should you become a mechanical engineer? So this is one of the earlier forms of engineering, which one as evergreen. Most of the concepts, whatever I explained, can be felt or observed, like motion is happening. So it's interesting also. If you have a passion to create a product, then this is one of the branches that is going to be very suitable for you. And as mechanical engineers, we are better equipped to take decisions. For example, how to plan projects, okay? Then how to become key players. So, for example, any project or any uh, experiment that we do in lab, so we will need a team of people to do it. So, we'll have better team playing dynamics, okay? Definitely, we need industries in the future. So, as long as there are industries, there will be requirement of mechanical engineers. There is one small downside compared to other software jobs: the salary is little less in the beginning. Okay, so if that is looking as a disadvantage, then you should know how to overcome it with your passion. Okay, so we also have to spice it up by making our course as interdisciplinary. We can learn new programming languages or new tools which will be ready over the others, and one of them being mechatronics and robotics. So that is something I'll be covering in next uh, 15 minutes. What is mechatronics? It is a subject that deals or brings together mechanical, electrical, and computer science. Okay, it's a combination of all these three. Usually, these mechatronic systems are not multi-purpose, so that means it is built for only one application. So, for example, you have power windows of your car. You press a button, the window goes up and down. Then we have automatic wipers in cars. If there is a rain drop that is falling on a particular sensor, there is small microprocessor or a computer which will detect and which will start your wiper. Similarly, in your AC and refrigerators, you have studied about uh, bimetallic strips. Different thermal expansion coefficients. Then industrial automation will have a lot of mechatronic devices like conveyor belts and uh, yeah, tool changing systems. Definitely, this is something you have all seen. Fast tag. So fast tag is the new uh, way of going over toll plazas. Your car will have a sticker with RFID, and there will be a sensor when you enter the toll booth. The sensor uh, sensors your toll sticker. Then the gate opens. So we have a computer science sensors are there which are electrical and electronic in nature. Then the gate that is opening will have a motor and two links. So definitely that also becomes a uh, mechatronic system. Okay. Obviously, mechatronics is a very vast field, 
then a very small subset inside that is known as robotics. What is robotics? That I'll be covering now. Robotics is a field subject related to a robot, which I'll define again. It deals with a study, basically. That means we should know what is a mathematical model, what are input, what are output for that particular robot. Then you should know how to design a particular robot by knowing the dimensions and also the components. Okay. Then we have uh, how to develop. Sorry. Okay. So then we have something to do with how to develop those components. So first, we know we learn how to do a virtual or simulator and then a physical prototype, okay? Then we apply all these concepts on a robot to have better uh, society and also to improve productivity if you're looking in terms of industrialization. Robot is a device or an equipment which can repeat instruction that I taught to it. It keeps on repeating whatever you give it as an instruction. That means you can program it. It is adaptive. You can reprogram. I have written one program. After one month, I want to change the program. I should be able to do that. Okay. And it can be used for many tasks. It's not just one task. Many different tasks can be done. So that is why it is adaptive. It should be smart because it should be able to take its own decision, autonomous. And it will have some sensors to get feedback and accordingly act on it. Okay. And there are few laws the robots have to follow. One is it should not hurt humans and it should not hurt itself. Okay. Definitely, defense robots is slightly different, but I will not going to get into that particular category. But all other robots have to follow all these uh, rules. Okay. Now, some of you have done this particular part. You would have been approached by some company in those schools that they say, like, we'll make you build robots. You would have made such robots. It will have few buttons like this. If you press on those buttons, the robot will go forward, back, right, left. Right? Now, I wouldn't say that as a robot. This is more like a toy. It's like a remote control toy. Right? So a robot is only uh, possible if it is able to be programmed. And it should have some sensors and some automation. So for example, this is a scenario where we have a line following robot. So it will have sensors to detect where the line is. And accordingly, it will turn. There will be a small computer somewhere here, which is something known as microprocessor. Okay. So this is the simplest robot you can think of. This is definitely not a robot. I would classify it as a toy. Okay. Now, robots are further classified as something that has a fixed space. So for example, these are the industrial robots. And again, all these images I'm going to show now on are from Amrita. So these two robots are there which are used in industries. So for example, this is welding robot, this is doing some pick and place operation. This one is a very, very, very expensive robot called Da Vinci. Da Vinci is a medical robot. Uh, we have one of them in uh, Amrita Institute of Medical Science in Kochi. It can be used to do telesurgery. The like, surgeon is sitting here, he's operating, and there's a camera feed, and accordingly there is operation that is this particular robot is known as parallel robot because it's like I have a platform here and there are multiple links that are connecting and I can move this robot like this. And this is also another serial robot. And uh, this is also fixed, but this is fixed on a moving platform. When the platform is moving, the robot is also moving on. Okay. Next category is moving base. I have simple robot here, which has uh, wheels. And I can ask it to move around based on some uh, sensor information. And this is a robot that can go on uh, different terrain, truck terrain also. Uh, the one that I'm fighting right now can fetch water for villages. So this is a robot that uh, Amritpuri campus uh, people have developed. Then this is another robot that can uh, climb coconut trees and uh, stack coconuts. Okay, coconut tree climbing robot. This is a rover that was uh, designed by uh, Amrita students. And they participated in a competition in the US. This is a robot again with uh, 
all terrain capabilities this is a quadruped or a drone that we all uh, know these days okay now these are some of my work so for example i deal with simulation so i have a device here which will track my hand and accordingly it will do some operation in the virtual space simulation similarly we have a robot here and the same robot is reflected on a laptop when i move this robot the one in the laptop also moves or vice versa i can first move it in the laptop and see whether it is working correctly and then move the actual robot similarly we have another simulation where it is on the uh, browser i can do some motion of this virtual robot and this work is by another team in uh, ambedkar campus it is known as virtual haptic rendering haptic means i can feel the force okay so the person what he is doing is he is uh, pushing the hacksaw and the same is being reflected on a screen so we can use such system to train people how to cut so those kind of information and coming to uh, the current scenario of covid so definitely this is not a good scenario but uh, fortunately amrita has been doing some good work so this is a robot that they have developed for surveillance on street remotely operated this is a remote operated uh, wheelchair so that the contact with the patient and the caregiver is not there this is a quadrotor or a drone which can deliver medicines so you can see that there is a tracking uh, structure here and medicine can be uh, dropped from a particular height and this will absorb the shock and there are few more robots the robot that i am pointing right now can be used to deliver uh, food and medicine to patients without coming in contact with them in isolation wards this is a robot that has uv lamps and it can clean uh, rooms so some of the infections similarly few more devices are there so there is a face mask that was developed by the students this is a ventilator uh, a low cost ventilator that was developed by uh, all these images are not just for mechanical they are from different uh, uh, branches since it is a covid scenario and some robotics are there i have included those and this is an uh, isolation box where doctor can operate upon uh, patients Uh, without getting infected, and this is a suit which lets air come inside uh, the face mask and uh, help the surgeons and the doctors have better ventilation. Okay, so robotics again. Uh, I would like to spend a couple of minutes here. What has been the past? So we always looked at uh, simple robots which were. Uh, like this so this is a very old robot in 1960s and 70s okay summary if this robot goes and hits someone either the robot will break or the person will break or the object will break okay so the robots are not intelligent if they can't sense i have been obstructed okay so that meant that uh, robots had to be in a work cell a confined environment and humans cannot enter when the robots are working so that was the earlier scenario now we have robots which have some uh, sensors on their joints if if, if the robot goes and hits someone okay the robot senses that and it stops so those kind of robots can be used for scenarios where we have human and robot interaction okay so such robots are currently available and they have a lot of sensors and they are also smart okay what does the future look like we'll definitely have a lot of robots which will do self learning machine learning and they'll keep improving with time like for example google its search algorithm keeps on increasing with time okay similarly we will have robots which will have such capabilities and we'll have different modules developed by different companies we can make them into bigger robots and when we have robots in collaborative space we call it as cobots collaborative robots so that is going to be the future and uh, this is one image of an iron man which has three robots working on top of it okay so that means three robots should talk to each other and the object and the motion should all be synchronized 
Okay. So this could be our future of robots. And just talking in terms of uh, manufacturing robots, definitely the same ap applies for flying robots, mobile robots, and so on. Okay. Now, uh, final few slides. Why uh, someone should choose Amrita? Because uh, our chancellor has these philosophies. We should have education for life, not for a living. That means what? Whatever you learn, it should be applicable for better life. Okay? And the research what we do should be towards improving the society and compassion driven. Okay? So these are the key distinguishing factors uh, we have at Amrita. And the pillars that we have are basically interdisciplinary. Most of the work that the students do will have some interdisciplinary skills. Okay. Then we also emphasize on innovation where students do new projects, think of new solutions to existing problems. Then we also have very good collaboration with a lot of international uh, universities. Then industries, definitely the placements are good. And also we have ties with uh, many uh, industries for consultancy work. Few of the projects that I showed are from an industry partner. Okay. And finally, we also look at problems that are centric to India. So there are a few uh, good things that Amrita does is something on the living labs where Amrita has uh, adopted many villages, more than 100 villages. And the problems that the villagers face are thought about and then solutions are proposed. Yeah, I think I'm almost done. What are the different scopes for mechanical engineers? We have the students in mechanical and robotics can take up job or do research, go for higher studies, or also become entrepreneurs. So yeah, these are some of the companies that we get in Amrita for core jobs, mechanical and robotics. Okay, so AdWorb is one such company where one of my students is currently working. So they make uh, robots. Okay. Similarly, for higher studies, this is just a small list where there are many more universities, institutes where our students have gone. These are the institutes where I personally know students who have gone. Some of my students have gone into these universities and uh, institutes for uh, research, internship, or higher studies. So, conclusion uh, we looked at an overview of Amrita. Then, mechanical engineering, it's a natural extension of physics, chemistry, and mathematics, whatever you have studied in your plus two. Mechanical also serves as a bridge to mechatronics and robotics. Okay, so if you want to get into robotics, so this is one of the avenues for you to go about. And definitely all robots and need mechanical structure and motion. Okay, so the role of mechanical engineers in robotics will never stop. And I also look at uh, robotics in this webinar. So it, it is an interdisciplinary field and it has a very, very, very bright future. All the new government teams and uh, FTPs want robotics to be one of the uh, top subjects, okay. key area. So with all this, my only suggestion to you is please choose your course wisely. Don't come under pressure of someone or your peers or your coaching institutes or anyone for that matter. So you just have to think about those two topics I told passion, supply, demand. If you are able to understand what I am talking about, so you will be able to take a good decision. Okay. So about Amrita and other stuffs are listed here. The URLs are given about BTEC in engineering or in robotics or about myself. These are the links. Finally, I would like to thank you for your kind patience to listen to me. I would like to wish you all the best for all your future competitive exams and in life also. So if you are impressed and if you want to become a mechanical engineer or into robotics, I would like to see you at Amrita.
with that i would like to conclude my webinar om amriteshwari nama uh thank you rajiv sir for the very informative session on uh, robotics and mechanical engineering i would request all the participants to type in their queries uh, a few of which will be answered by us in the q and a section okay uh, i'm going to start off with few questions someone says robotics has not yet started in our country uh, blah 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 and if we do robotics from now uh, i think the robotics is a very advanced topic what i would like to say is we are already doing good in robotics it's not that we are lagging behind definitely uh, the hardware components are slightly expensive in india but if you are smart you can get those components and you can make very good robots so whatever you show uh, you saw in the slides were robots developed by our students so definitely we are uh, not lagging behind compared to the other western countries or japan or korea we are very well uh, in competition with them okay uh, then i would like to I'm planning to choose hardware engineer as my career. Hardware engineer. If you say hardware as computer networking, uh, well, that is a good field also. But if you want to have passion on making scalable systems, so for example, uh, a, ro a rocket when it goes to space. we need a lot of computers to talk to each other okay so the communication between them should be very good so if you are talking in terms of networking then obviously that is a very hot area also so definitely that has very good scope you may want to become a hardware engineer and still be associated with robotics because robotics also will have many fields and you need a good hardware support there as well okay what is the difference between mechanical and automobile okay so uh, mechanical will deal with design thermal manufacturing and industrial these are the four right when it comes to automobile it will be mainly design and thermal the thermal will have lot of ic engines combustion and all those aspects which will drive the automobile they may not study much of manufacturing science and industrial engineering okay so automobile is a subset of mechanical mechanical you will have better overview you can branch out into other fields like robotics or any other field for that matter thermal automobile you will be restricting yourself to a particular field okay uh as a mechanical engineering student how to improve your skills on robotics any source or course okay so definitely you can look at robo analyzer that is a software that i was also part of you can try to go through the software and uh, if you have any doubts related to how to learn robotics kindly uh, contact me through that website robo analyzer and if you want to look at how to improve your mathematics there are a lot of nptel courses available you can probably go through them also okay i am a diploma holder in mechanical engineering can i get admitted maybe my team will uh, answer that uh, sir there is one more one question uh, what can the students learn in the lockdown period to boost their robotics knowledge okay uh, can that person keen so if they are in class 11 and 12 yeah uh, i mean they should study okay. <laughs> and okay. tell if they are okay. doing engineering then okay. there are many avenues uh, there are free courses available on uh, coursera okay uh, i don't know whether it is still available till july it was there and we also have, as i said 
recently or just now uh, nttel nttel has many courses on robotics okay another thing is you just have to make robots whatever components you have if you don't have robot uh, motors at home maybe uh, you can do some form of simulation okay robo analyzer is a software that is ideally suited currently because it is all simulation based Kindly go to the website of roboanalyzer.com. There, there will be few video lectures. Again, like I have given few video, video lectures there, and the software is user friendly. So, what I would like to emphasize through this message is, the robotics has a lot of mathematics. Okay, so please don't think that if I press this button, robot is moving. I am good at robotics. No, you should know exactly if I press this button, how much the robot will. So that is only possible if you know the mathematics that is inside it. So please brush up your mathematics in this lockdown period and try to learn the fundamental mathematics related to robots. So you can go to Robonalizer website and uh, look at it. Do the girls have any disadvantage in studying mechanical engineering? No, 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 definitely not. Okay, I'll give you a very uh, interesting example there are few companies which with a tumblr which only take girl candidates okay sorry boys this is a fact okay so there are few thinking aspects of men and women that are different right and also few companies have a policy of ratio how many men should be there how many women should be there right so Definitely, women or girls have a lot of scope in mechanical engineering. One of the days where uh, uh, women are, were not considered a good mechanical engineer. If you are passionate about building stuff, please join. Few of my students who are girls are working in core companies. They are doing fantastic. Okay. Only thing is, you will not be allowed to go on field. Where uh, a lot of men will be there for uh, obvious reasons, but definitely there will be a lot of work which involves uh, you to work from uh, a desktop, an office, or with some project management team also. <clears throat> okay, there is one topic: overall trend of mechanical engineering is going down at present. How will it change? Robotics will reduce manpower. Okay, sir. I think I would like to uh, differ here. The trend is driven by few people with vested interest. That is what my philosophy is. The requirement for mechanical engineers will always be there. Okay, so it's just that so few branches are easy to teach, okay, and learn, and also become engineer. So those are getting more emphasized now, but definitely if all become that, there'll be uh, a situation where nobody will be benefited. Okay, will not have enough jobs there. All these people will become frustrated. So mechanical is one field which is going to remain forever. That is for sure. Within mechanical engineering, you have to improve. You have to make it more interdisciplinary. You have to learn programming. Okay, one of the complaints I get from students is, sir, to avoid programming itself, I join mechanical. Why are you teaching us programs? And this is a valid complaint. I mean, they probably don't want to become programmers. But any core company, for that matter, also expects you to know how to operate in Microsoft Excel, MS Excel. You can write program in MS Excel. You have a lot of data. You take that data and generate reports automatically. That also requires some form of program. Okay, so what I would like to emphasize again through this question is mechanical engineering. One other days where only core job was there. No, you have to become interdisciplinary to fight and get a good job. Will robots reduce human manpower? Uh, probably not. Robots are only used to do tasks where productivity can be increased. So those people can be employed other places also. 
whoever you feel are getting uh, displaced, we can definitely accommodate them in many ways. My teacher used to tell in the 80s when computers came, people, the banking people or office people, they used to say, what will happen, we'll do jobs. No, computers help their life, make their life easy, and they could spend more time on other useful tasks, like lot ledger entry, manual calculation. We are prone to make mistakes. Computers are used to do those tasks, and the person can spend his time on more higher quality work. Okay. Is it good to take mechanical and then specialization in robotics? Yes, that is what I have done. I have no complaints of that. Does Amrita have mechatronics branch? No, unfortunately, we do not have. But uh, yeah, mechanical is a good branch in the tech if you ask. I am interested to learn mechanical engineering with specialization in artificial intelligence. Do I choose mechanical or mechatronics? Okay. I think, see, your core branch should be something that is pretty old, okay? And then you keep adding on top of it. Personally, mechatronics, some places it's not recognized, especially if you uh, go for a government job. And this is out of whatever information I had from six years ago. So if you are a B.Tech in mechanical, you may apply for a few government jobs. If you are a B.Tech in mechatronics, you might not be able to. They might not consider you as a mechanical engineer for that position. Okay? Neither mechatronics will be considered for electronics. So uh, it's a very tricky situation. So, if you ask me, your VTEC should be in one of the core areas, okay, and do master's specialization in whatever field you want. If we do mechanical engineering, can we join top automobile companies like BMW, Audi? Uh, we do have uh, Hyundai that comes to us, Renault, Royal and Free. The Caterpillar, these are some of the companies. I don't know whether BMW and Audi are there in the list. I'm not sure. Uh, anything, Swaroop, you have? Uh, uh, just a minute. Is master degree mandatory for BTEC mechatronics? I don't know what you talk about. Master mandatory for BTEC in mechatronics? I'm not sure. If you are getting a good job for BTEC mechatronics, please do it. If not, then you may have to do a master degree. Yeah, ultimately, you have to do a job. If you get a good job after BTEC, you please do. If you don't get a good job, if you are not valued in the society, go for higher education. Higher education, extra degrees always matter. Okay, there are a few comments. Thank you for clarification and wonderful webinar. I'm very glad you liked it. Uh, thank you so much, sir, for the wonderful webinar. Uh, we would be winding up here. Uh, okay. For any further uh, details, the participants can log on to www.amrita.edu slash webinars for future webinars. Uh, thanking all the participants uh, again on behalf of Amrita Vishwa Vidya Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you.